Right, it's at university today, so I have the house to myself. I don't have it all weekend, it's only today, so I need to make the most of it. A couple of little jobs to do, uh, there's a wash on at the moment, which I need to hang up outside and hope it doesn't blow away, because it's, it's duvets, duvets. I can never get them to go on the line properly without them blowing away, it's a nightmare. Therefore I need to make the bed and then possibly get that in if it starts raining, but it shouldn't rain today. Um, and I think that's about it. I think I need to go to the shop as well, but I don't need to. So I am going to be doing a load of programming. I've been struggling recently with focusing on what it is that I'm doing. In the, in the sense that I've suddenly, when everything that I was doing a couple of weeks ago was like all front user facing stuff. This is all like infrastructure related back end processes that make all that front stuff work. And it's just harder to like get your teeth into it. It's harder to like get stuck in because there isn't really, like normally you can either start from the front and work back or from, from the back and work forward, but here it's like, you can't really start anywhere particularly because it's all about like firing off commands and firing off events to make sure things work. Um, and you can't fire off that event until this one's done. You end up writing like 10 different things that aren't all finished until the last little minute when it all like clicks into place. Um, but the reason I've been struggling with it mostly is because I've been really focused on trying to improve things at work. Um, so I've been like really focused on how we don't seem to have like a proper process for defining what a ticket is and therefore we have like 20 tickets, some of them are so small that you end up doing them as part of other tickets by mistake and then they just disappear and some of them are absolutely massive and I start fixating on that and I'm like how can I fix that? I'm like it's not your job to fix that Jimmy, <laughs> it doesn't matter, as long as your tickets make sense to you, fuck it, wise, I need to figure out how I'm going to get this thing deployed. And so I'm writing a new microservice, we have no way of deploying it, I need to figure that out sooner rather than later. <laughs> because uh, the, the entire project is based on the fact that this microservice is available at some point soon. And I'm like, I'm thinking about those things and it's burning up CPU power in my own brain and I need to stop doing it. So I am trying to forget about it. I'm trying to leave work and just go, Bloop. it doesn't matter to me anymore, I'll solve it tomorrow. Um, but I'm not very good at that. <laughs> I fixate on problems, I become obsessed with them and I try and solve them all the time. Um, so, there's that. But, that's not for today. Today, I am focusing on hooking up my message buses so that I'm able to um, find out what's going on with uh, setting up these hooks. Basically, the user says, I want to subscribe to this and this and this, and then I go, okay, right, what do we need to do to make that work, boys? And then we, I can go back to the user when it's finished and go, cool. But it's one of those things where the user asks to do it, and then I go off and do it. Like, I don't do it as they ask me, uh, I do it when it makes sense for me to do it. So, it's gonna be good, it's gonna be good fun. That's my focus for today. Also my focus is, I realise, I appreciate, I've been pretty bad with these vlogs recently. Um, I watch them back when I'm trying to, I'm rendering one out now, uh, when I try to like write the descriptions and write the titles, and I'm like, what the fuck happened in this video, man? So, the other part of my brain that isn't focusing on this, is focusing on trying to make these videos somewhat interesting to people who don't know absolutely everything that I'm doing and are interested in programming. Speaking of which, um, I'm also struggling to wake up at night. Um, I'm not waking up when I'm supposed to and it's bugging me. So I'm trying to think of a solution for that as well. Um, I feel like I should just not do it anymore. But I need time. Time is money and I need more of both. You that feeling when the doorbell goes, you've got that, you've got to roll a dice on whether or not it's a delivery and you want to go and get it, or it's just going to be some monk trying to give you some bullshit. <laughs> Open the door. Do you think, uh, what was it? No, yeah, no, I opened the door and uh, saw it was just a guy and a guy behind him, like an old bloke and then a younger bloke behind him. He's holding a Bible. And I go, ah, look mate, I'm not interested. And he goes, oh, I guess that answers my question. I was going to ask you if you thought the Bible was relevant. And I was like, no, no, I don't, mate. See ya. Thanks. Thanks for your time. Have a good day, mate. Yeah, bye. <laughs> Leave me alone. Why is it acceptable for people to just knock on your door like that? Like, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. There'd, there'd be, like, uproar. Would there be uproar if someone did that and they were, like, Muslim? Probably. I'd imagine that. Because they'd be like, oh, people coming around to indoctrinate you. Um, I might be being a bit racist there. If like, yeah, I'm going to stand by that. Like, that's only acceptable because they're Christians. Standing by that, that. I'm accusing everyone else of being racist there. Because I don't want anyone coming to my door. 
<laughs> I'm not saying, yeah. It shouldn't be acceptable to just walk up to someone's door and try and uh, indoctrinate them into a religion. Done. Full stop. Doesn't matter what the religion is, doesn't matter who it is. <laughs> Full stop. I'm outside to check the washing. I wish it was easier to work on a computer outside. I make out that I don't like outside much, but I actually just feel like I don't have enough time <laughs> to be out of it, you know? Um, and I'm the kind of person who doesn't like to sit around and not do much. So I can't just like sit passively be outside. I guess I could like read a book or something, or something like that, but that's not productive. You know, it's ever so sunny outside, it's ever so warm, and that washing is basically nearly dry. So that's good, because there's nothing worse than putting washing outside, I need to bring it inside, and put it back up again. I don't think um, tomorrow's wash will dry outside though, I think it's raining. Look at this. We put some blinds up, boys. Consequence of which is it's echoey AF in here. But we have blinds now. We've wanted blinds for ages. We bought them yonks ago and never put them up. But because we don't need to do any more painting on this side of the room, we can. So we did. And it's so much better. And also, because we took the old blinds down that were a bit broken, um, in the daytime we can open up the whole bay. And you get so much more light, so much nicer. So. Yeah. When Laura came home from uni, she did some pottering in the garden, and then we did that. We made some dinner, and we watched some TV. And lived the goddamn dream. Tomorrow, we were going to do that tomorrow, but um, now uh, Laura's got like crossword to do. So uh, we, she has more time to do that, and so do I. It's bedtime, so. <laughs> Isn't that cool? It was remarkably easy as well. No way near as complicated as I expected it to be, um, which is good. Oh, good dinner, I've got a glass. I think I was planning on taking that downstairs earlier. Lol! I'm going down there now. But I made in my pyjamas again, so you can't tell the difference between today and yesterday apart from that little timestamp thing. Today was just a worky day. We just sat down, we just churned out some stuff. I've been just churning out all the shit that I need to do for my project. Um, and Laura's been doing some coursework stuff downstairs. And that's about it, to be honest with you. We headed on out to B&Q to go pick up some logs for the fire. Uh, a broom. I find it really difficult to find a garden brush. Like, Wilco's don't do one. Sainsbury's don't do one. Like, why doesn't Wilco's do one? They do spades and shit. But not garden brushes. We had to go to B&Q just for that. And then while we were there, we bought a balloon thing that you put up the chimney um, in an attempt to stop drafts. We're doing all of this like draft exclusion stuff after winter. We missed the boat a bit. And that is about it, to be honest with you. We've literally, it's just been a worky, worky day. Um, so I'm gonna just stop talking. I tried to shift back to uh, waking up at two instead of waking up at half past midnight um, and doing the three hours, three 20 minute nap thing. Um, didn't work out for me again. I feel like the only thing I can do is stay up late these days. Um, like I can stay up till one o'clock in the morning and wake up at six, that's fine. Um, but going to bed early and waking up really, really early just isn't working out. As much as it pains me, I don't think I can just throw hours at this anymore. Um, like I used to be able to. Um, but I obviously can still throw some hours at it, but I can't throw every hour under the sun like I used to, or under the moon. <laughs> I need to <sighs> start being clever, a bit more clever anyway. I'm home ladies and gentlemen. It was a pretty good day today. I was Expecting to lose a load of time to uh, trying to get something deployed. We got a balloon for uh, the chimney and it's far too small. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't fit width ways uh, and it's just fallen down as well apparently. So How much lighter it is in here man, with the blinds. It's freaking great. Um, also, when they're like this, you can't see them from the outside. Even freaking better. I was expecting to lose a load of time to um, the deployment system, I sent an email to the person that I need to help me and he said he will talk to me tomorrow. Um, they apparently they have an idea for how, as how we're going to do it, so YOLO. <laughs> uh, it just means I'm going to be working with someone who might not be around until next week, uh, which will be fun. But at least I'll know what stack they've got and then I can figure it out myself. Um, it's hopefully the plan, because um, I don't really want to have to spend time working with that because it just slows things down basically. I, I kind of want to take control of deployments. Um, I feel like it's something that we should do. Um, 
we have <laughs> we have the oxymoronic DevOps team, <laughs> um, and they are the people who currently own deployments, um, and I want to rip that out and put have DevOps developers within the teams, um, and that is what I am. Yeah, uh, that is what I'm working at. But yeah, so otherwise I had a day of just sit down, churn out some shit. Uh, I got in a bit of a fight with .NET uh, versions, which kind of, or Visual Studio, more to the point, which kind of fucked me. Um, but otherwise we churned through, I've got like a HTTP client that's now talking to an external service, and I'm tunneling through trying to make the domain do what it's supposed to do to talk to them, um, and there's someone else remotely who's working from home today uh, is adding validation to the API models, and we're trying to like work at it from both directions. Um, it's good fun. <laughs> and what's the most fun is this. This is the first time I'm getting a, like a 100% say on what's going on. Um, and I've introduced things like StyleCop. Uh, and StyleCop enforces things like comments um, <laughs> on anything that's public. And he was like, do we need to have this? And I'm like, I feel like it's a good thing most of the time. I can understand how sometimes it's a bit pointless, but when it is valuable, it's really valuable. So, um, but because they're using things like Visual Studio Code, support for uh, StyleCop, like, uh, well, C Sharp Analyzers is less because of uh, OmniSharp, um, which I've discovered, fixed for him. Um, this is one of the things I've got to do, is just kind of constantly keep in mind that not everyone is on Windows and not everyone's using full Visual Studio. Um, having said that, uh, just because that is the case, doesn't mean I will be dropping the quality of the code. Uh, just to support them. <laughs> like, tough, tough shit basically. But I'm home, I'm gonna wait for Laura to come back, and meanwhile, I'll start doing some programming. I need to make the most of my normal time because I don't have time in the morning anymore. It really bugs me when I, um, I always try when I leave some work to leave a failing test so that I know where I'm at, where I can carry on at least one failing test. Um, but every now and again, I get to the point where obviously I've last, the last thing I did, I checked in and I pushed it up. Uh, to the repo, which meant that all the tests pass, and I'm like, where the fuck was I? <laughs> what was I doing? What's really interesting at work is um, something I'm, I come across it. I'm basically solving similar problems that I solve here at work um, because I'm following the same pattern basically um, to do the same kind of stuff. Um, so up here and at work, I'm raising commands into the domain and letting the domain return things back. I need an object to wrap that up with. Um, they used to have stuff in this big behemoth NuGet package area, um, but those NuGet packages are privately hosted, they're not on a public uh, server, and I can't access them from the new build pipeline that we want to use. Um, so I'm trying to stay away from them. I'm not just trying to stay away from them for that reason. A lot of them are hot garbage, so I'm, <laughs> so I'm trying to have like a, a full stop. This NuGet package area is dead. It's burnt. It's fucked. No one looks at it. We're going to use new stuff from now on. Um, and therefore, I'm, I'm creating stuff that uh, should be in a NuGet package. And I have them preemptively NuGet packaged here um, because I'm going to use them cross microservice. They're going to use them cross microservice. But we don't yet have another microservice that uses them. So I'm going down the, uh, the um, Yagni, you're not going to need it route uh, where. I don't yet have another microservice, so I don't need it in a NuGet package, I'm gonna leave it where it is, which is something that I do here as well, uh, but I have multiple microservices now. It's interesting as I'm effectively re-implementing some of their stuff, but cleaner, uh, and not NuGet packaged. Um, I'm getting ready for the, for the arguments of whether or not we should just put in the old ones. Um, but there's, there's a NuGet package they use, it's a public one, um, called iOptions, I think it is, or iOptional. And it's uh, an implementation of a Java package, and it's the most confusingly written API I think I've ever read. Where you return something, and then you do like dot map, dot sum, means you can uh, append an action that does operations on the result if it's successful, and dot non means you can do stuff if it's non, and then you've got the error result. It's the most confusing API, and I'm burning it to the fucking ground. They've used it everywhere. <laughs> and I'm like, this is not intuitive at all. Um, it's gone. So, yeah, that's gone as well. The reason I bring this up is because I'm like, should I make public some of the ones that I use here and then I don't have to re-implement them at work? No. <laughs> the answer there is no. Um, because all of these are very Alice uh, packages, not Jamie Ped ones. 
Um, and also, they're not public. They're on my private uh, feed. They're just accessible on the public web, unlike our media packages, which are on a private server, which is behind a VPN and a firewall. And I'm like, can we make this public? And they're like, no. And I'm like, OK. But I'm thinking I'm going to try next time we go to a proper. I'm like, right, we need nougat packages now. And they're like, right, we'll burn this nougat package server. It's garbage. It's got a load of shit on it. Let's have one in the, in the public. Let's host it on the cloud. Let's put it in Google Cloud or just pay for something like MyGet or ProGet, something like that. Or just get Visual Studio Online or use your DevOps and just host it for free. So to be fair, it wouldn't be free for a company the size that we have. Um, it's free for Varialis, but it's not free for a company uh, the size that I work for. Um, it would be however much it is per developer. I said that, do not get me wrong, it's definitely worth it. Um, but especially considering how much we're paying for something inferior like fucking Bitbucket, which is and Jira and Atlassian. Fucking Atlassian. Burn it to the ground. It's hot and garbage, that company. Everything that company produces. The only good thing in their suite of software is Trello, and they didn't even fucking make that, they bought it. And that explains why it's good. I still can't really decide if I prefer going to the shop and shopping or letting them deliver it here. Um, but I have that hat, so I'll do it if it's cheap. You do, you have to buy weirder stuff, because bizarrely not everything is available online. Anyway, um, we watched the sir. Um, and where, well, Laura's already in bed, but I'm heading to bed now. Um, I'm going to start staying up later. I'm not going to wake up early anymore. Um, I need to figure out how to um, work more effectively with less time. Um, I've done like two hours worth of work today. So it's not like I'm, I'm not doing anything, um, but I do need to be more productive with the time that I have. I need to look after myself a little bit more at one hour 50. I was doing I was trying to figure out what data it was I needed to send to the um, API in order to create what I need to create. Um, I'd written it down on a piece of paper before, I'd like already mapped it outwards, and I'd lost it. <laughs> um, and I'd like kind of defined it right at the end there. And I started tunneling through this way, and I need to do this middle bit here, and I need to figure out what to pass in at that point. Um, but it's pretty easy, really. It's just basically one ID and a fucking string. Happy birthday. Yeah, happy days. It's going well. It is going well. Oh, but it's bedtime. I've been very tired today for no reason because I didn't get up. I need to work super early today. Um, it's not even eight o'clock yet. And I'm gonna get in for about quarter past eight and it's about 10 to at the moment. So doing good. I'm focusing at the moment on being well rested. Uh, slept pretty well last night. Had a good night's sleep and walking in feeling good this morning. And that's good. Uh, I was hoping that I can leverage some of this so that I can do it so that I can benefit from it tonight when I'm working on my stuff, not just work when I'm at work. <laughs> Tended to end the video yesterday and it's just occurred to me, sorry about that, longer one than normal. Um, I had a freaking flyer of a day today. I've basically completely written an entire microservice talking to a third party. I mean, it's not doing much, it's literally just taking an endpoint and then like you make a request to it, then it makes a couple of requests on your behalf and then spits you back the result uh, or a version of the result. Um, but I managed to do all of that, and then halfway through, yes, yesterday-ish, um, I gave someone else uh, the front-end model validation to do, um, and he didn't even finish that today. I'm freaking done, boys. Really interesting. What's really interesting about this project is like, um, we've kind of started it. We've been thrown onto this project now because they need us on this project. What, but what they don't need, we've got two teams working on it, another team's working on it and it's, but we don't need two teams. The reason they were starting it now is because we weren't able to start it now and they need to start it soon. But the amount of work there is to do is all the microservices and that's, that's me, that's my job, that's what I do. I do the microservices and no one else knows how. <laughs> so it's, it's fascinating watching like resources get shimmied around effectively to try and get me working on the microservices. And I've just done it, boys, I've just fucking just shit it out. There you go, Boop, done. I'm pretty happy about that. I'm pretty happy about that, my boy. But yeah, so um, now I've just got to worry about getting it deployed. So I'm gonna fucking sort that out tomorrow. Otherwise, Laura's on the way home. I am waiting for her. I'm gonna sort some dinner out and then we're gonna have lots of work tonight. Normally I get home and then do work, but she's already on a bus. 
which is surprising because it means she'll be back in like half an hour and that is unprecedented and unfortunately what I need to do is do some rice and that means uh, boiling water which means sitting over it so it doesn't overboil. If it's one of the things like yesterday we could throw it in the oven, you can just come downstairs and sort it out, go back upstairs, do some work. Um, but I'm going to chill out for a little bit and watch some YouTube vids and then hit it hard after that. So trying my hardest not to eat, not to eat stuff. I got into the habit of just kind of coming home and just like having a couple of biscuits. <laughs> just have a couple of bickies, uh, a couple of sweets because I'm hungry. Try my hardest to get out of that habit. Putting on weight, not doing enough exercise. But maybe I will start doing exercise now and look after myself a little bit more. And another productive evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, nearly got everything hooked up now for the um, initial registration. I just need to add it to my database when it's successfully hooked up. And then I need to work on the actual um, cloud function that it's going to be talking to. Um, it's going well. To say I'm going to get like two hours a day, they do feel like productive two hours. I don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not getting three and a half hours worth of work done. But I'm probably getting more than two hours. That makes sense. I was waking up in the morning uh, and then still having the... Because I've always got these two hours anyway. These two hours would be less productive than the two hours I get on a, th on a three hour morning. Um, I think, I feel like. Um, but yeah, so that's nearly done. I need to start focusing back on other things again. Because um, I've slacked on that big time. Um, but yeah, we'll get there. I need to end this video though, ladies and gentlemen. Because um, I am going off to bed. <sighs> so, thank you very much for watching this video, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, we're going to keep it up. We're going to keep on doing stuff. You know me, mad as Yeah, I do need to... Shifting focus to productivity rather than time. Efficiency. Uh, like eventually, I'm gonna I'm gonna start staying up later. Um, but I'm just like I'm I'm warming up for that, you know. But yeah, that's that. <sighs> that's life. But yeah, the because basically, as it's starting to get harder and harder for me to fall asleep on time, um, that's why I start deciding to stay up later. Um, but yeah, I need to. I just need to. What I genuinely really need to do outside of figuring out how much that is figuring out how to balance my time productively oh. <laughs> uh, and then spend my time productively. <sighs> Life's so hard isn't it ladies and gentlemen. Well thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said earlier, I'll catch you later.